you're planning to apply for a patent, you need to put in place appropriate systems and standard operating procedures. This video explains how to do that with the Electronic Lab Notebook eCAT. It's essential in any patent situation to be able to demonstrate that you have appropriate systems and SOPs in place and that they're being followed in practice. To do that with eCAT, someone needs to be appointed as administrator. This can either be the PI or someone, such as a research technician or lab manager, that the PI appoints. The administrator will need to become familiar with eCAT administration, but this is straightforward and does not take Jones. any special computers. There's a simple administration guide by, accompanied by how-to videos in eCAT. It's important to be able to identify who made all entries in the notebook. So the administrator should set up individual accounts for every member of the lab or group. Since each user has their own password, an eCAT automatically keeps a full audit trail of each entry. It will always be possible to identify who made a particular entry. It's also important to have in place a system that assures that passwords are only known to each user and have an SOP which can be used to support the claim that the procedure was followed in practice. All data should be identified with respect to the project to which it relates. That's easy in eCAT. Just set up a project folder for each project and make all records relating to that project children of the project folder. Because of eCAT's automatic audit trail, you have a complete record of the time that all entries in a particular record have been made. In interference proceedings, the U.S. Patent Office has ruled that an inventor is not competent to prove the making and reduction to practice of an invention by their own testimony, which must be corroborated by another witness. The other witness must not be a joint inventor. So, another investigator should look over the entries in the lab notebook as frequently as possible and place their initials at the end of each entry with the date. To make this possible, the ECAT administrator should give someone who will serve as witness the PI or another designated person in the lab, view and edit permission on the relevant records of the person or persons who are conducting the experiments. There are various ways of doing that in eCAT. Because experiments are children of projects, the simplest way is for the administrator to give the witnessing person view and edit permission on the project of which the experiments are children. All records in that project then automatically inherit those permissions. The administrator can also give you an edit permission to a witness for a particular record. When an experiment is being carried out, periodically the designated person should look over entries and witness them by signing. ECAT has a notification system which lets users send messages and set tasks for each other. That makes it easy for the person who is working on an experiment to let the witness know it's time to take a look at progress. Simply send the witness a task with a link to the record to be reviewed. A flag appears in the witness's notification tab. They can open the task and then they can click on the link and are taken directly to the record. Then they can sign or before doing that leave a comment. The signature will automatically be recorded in the audit trail. After a record has been signed, it's impossible for it to be altered. So that's a clear advantage of eCAT over a paper lab book. But don't worry, eCAT has an amendment function. If you want to make a change after a record has been signed, you can do this as an amendment. The change clearly shows up as an amendment. And it's possible to sign amendments. There's even a second level of signing called authorizing. After a record has been signed once, it cannot be signed again.
but it can be authorized. This happens in the same way as signing. Entries should include all formulae which were considered during the project. Diagrams and sketches should be accompanied by explanations sufficient to identify and explain the subject matter. Another investigator, looking over these entries, should be able to determine the nature of the project, when it was commenced, what ideas were considered during the project, the compounds created and tested, the results of the tests, the dates with respect to all of the above, and the final conclusions. And each entry by itself should as far as possible be intelligible to another investigator without specific explanation. So, it's important to be clear and well organized in documenting your research. ECAD supports the direct inclusion inside records of a variety of different file formats, as well as an ability to link to any file format from a record. This is incredibly useful in patent preparation. Traditionally, getting any kind of image data or data from an external file into your paper lab notebook involves some kind of manual process, either printing of the image and sticking it in the notebook, or copying and pasting bits of data from results files into your experimental results. This is also very old-fashioned. With ECAT, you can simply link to your files or make thumbnails of your images directly in your experimental results. All the inserted data is saved and preserved at that point. When this is combined with a simple SOP to guarantee that your files can't change, you have a complete audit trail of all your data which can be used for legal compliance.